Hello everyone, greeting you with a mini roast uh, today. So if you remember my video a few, maybe back last year, show you a few mini roses that I got from local nursery. I think I got, my goodness, how many? Maybe four, between four to six of them. Interestingly, that um, most of them are quite struggling and I planted them in the ground except this one that I planted in this pot is the one that is the healthiest and has the most bloom. Isn't that crazy? So I'm going to show you the one that I planted in the ground as well and you, you will see a huge difference and I did mention that in that video that I never quite have much luck when it comes to the mini roses. Um, I don't have much success growing them compared to uh, the big, the normal size roses. So, but um, I'm glad that at least this one is doing really well and it has uh, many blooms on here. Looking really good and I can't believe how healthy it looks. That is so cute. So, so pretty. And the next one that I'm going to show you, um, I have quite a few out here. This is Mary Rose that I don't see. I don't see many buds yet. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, there are some still small. So I prune all of them at the same time. And this one is going to take a while to see the bloom but look at this one hot cocoa this is the third year and it finally gives me this really nice bloom the color in real life is like smoky red which is kind of hard to explain um, hard to capture as well because what you see right here is kind of reddish orange right but in real life it's like a dark smoky red color Overall, it is healthy. In the past few years, I mean, it blooms some, um, not a whole lot, and the blooms not, um, I would say, not this pretty. So maybe this is the year that it will actually do well. And these are um, other mini roses that I have in a different spot versus the one that um, I show you earlier in in the pot. So they don't look that bad. Um, they did get a lot of black spot though. It's interesting because they are all the same coming from the same place and all that but these three placing um planting in the ground somehow do not grow as much or as well as um, the other one in the pot right interesting a few weeks ago like all of them full of black spots and i had to defoliate or Either that or the foliage is just fell off by themselves. But right now, looking pretty good. So hopefully they will do better and continue to grow and um, give us some flowers to enjoy. And since we are here, I did uh, add native plants. I don't remember what these are called. This one I don't remember, but I thought that um, <clears throat> I incorporated more native plants, you know, like native flowers, to give colors during summertime. Because as you know, like 
it's super hot and uh, roses, they most of them they don't bloom well or they don't just bloom a whole lot during the summer. So these will give really nice colors during um, that time as well when roses are kind of taking a break. And this one, I have the name, I have the tag on this one. Oh, this, uh, this one is collapsing corn, cone flower, so like a yellow one. That should be pretty interesting to see. And I have a few others that I scattered throughout the yard as well. So, and that will help attracting attracting um, light pollinators and things like that in nature so let's continue with our rose update in my backyard uh, feels like a swamp at the moment because of the rain um, it was raining for about two days on and off and I didn't get to cut these roses to bring inside. Typically, um, I try to cut them to enjoy inside, but I did not. However, uh, these roses seem to be holding up quite well. As you can see, the wind was really strong last night, like really crazy strong. Um, of course, some roses that um, the blooms are older, of course, they shatter. But some of these still looking nice. Look at Coco Loco. This bloom is beautiful. I absolutely love the color of this rose. And if you look from uh, this angle right here, Coco Loco right here, and then Tinkerbell almost look like the same. Uh, it looks like it has this, um, they both have the same colors, right? But as I move closer, you'll be able to see. And with Coco Loco, when it first opened up, it will it is like kind of more brownish color. Not sure how well you'll be able to see through uh, my, as far as the difference colors in color um, with my phone right here because some bloom is more um, like it has that lavender tone to it and some has some more brown to it it's very unique in a way i love absolutely love this rose and this one i have had it for three years or oh, when did i buy it 2020 like i can't calculate in my head um, I think I got it in 2020 or maybe 2021, somewhere around there. But it's definitely one of my most favorite roses. And uh, overall health to me, overall it does really good. Although some people say the black spot bad, I would say it just depends on the time of the year but as you can see i do a no spray i don't use anything and of course there are certain times that it's going to have more, more black spot than another but this is what it looks like right now so looks good to me oh there's there's like snake um Okay, so the snake, I think they just shed their skin. So there's like a snake that has been here, um, but it's not like a dangerous kind of snake or anything. It's a, what do you call, coach whip? But that freaked me out a little bit. Let's shed their skin. Okay, it's not an actual snake, so it is somewhere. But anyhow, um, my husband loves snakes, and so he helps identify which one is a good one, which one to stay away. But the one that um, has been visiting the garden is the coach whip. So 
I'm not a snake person and I mean I am freaking out every time. Anyhow, I'm not going to get closer to that. So we are going to just look from the distance here on Pinker Bell. If you look at my um video, the the previous one, right? I show you a lot of damages from rip. And I think that's um actually encourages really good conversation because I got a few comments from people talking and sharing about their uh experience with spraying not spraying and things like that in nature and i just wanted to to um uh let you all know that once again it is not to to come across as saying what is right what what is wrong as far as as the method but i wanted people to know that there's no one way in uh doing rose gardening because that's my biggest misunderstanding when i first started and i had the perception that roses are such a um, drama queen because of the stereotype or perception that i have heard for years about it being um really high maintenance full of diseases and pests and all that and there's no way to grow roses without using tons of chemical and that was the reason why for years i didn't really want to deal with uh, roses because of that that reason of the being high maintenance and then having to uh, spray all the time things like that in nature because prior to starting the rose garden i start out growing veggies, herbs, and other flowers. And, and of course, with the veggies, I um, didn't want to spray. I want to to go as clean as possible and avoid uh, those things. And um, to mention this, I think it may help some people who may have been um, kind of not sure if Although they may like roses, but when they heard that, oh, you have to use a ton of products or have to spray all the time every week, two weeks in order to keep black spots and pests under control. And they may have like health issues or try to avoid exposing to certain chemicals and things like that for health reason. And that way they know that, oh, there's, it is totally possible if you don't want to uh use those products and you can grow roses without using anything because there's more and more people going this route too and with the right varieties uh your roses can be very um resistant when it comes to fighting off pests and diseases right and and when it comes to what varieties to um to select for your garden it is going to be quite different from you know one garden to another your zone and in everything and for my um climate there are several like maybe french roses mayon um cordes some david austin's actually a pretty good week's roses pretty good too and in the first few years your roses may be um you know they need time just like small children right they don't have a lot of immunity their immune system's not as strong and it takes time for them to develop that kind of um um immune stronger immune system to fight off diseases and pests and look at this finger bell I mean, look how healthy it is. And I don't remember last year. I, I think overall, this is a very healthy variety. Um, if you like the colors, I mean, it has really neat color. And I was going to show you, in case you didn't look at a previous video, right that the bloom it looks like that bad or worse if you saw that in the last video uh, these are from thrips 
um, and that bloom right there. And then I mentioned that I would let them open up. So these open up and of course the rain with the rain and everything. That's why they end up looking this way, but not actually not bad, but it's not picture perfect, right? So this one is going to look um, not too bad as well. And I did do a post on um, in the community section if you would like to check that out about three top three things that stole my garden joy for the past uh, few years when, especially when I first started with the rose gardening and so if you want to check that out and see if you could resonate to any of those reasons and I have kind of watch for the snake hope it doesn't pop up out of nowhere and that is um what is it life of the party yeah this year it's kind of slow to bloom but it's getting there and each year it is so different like one year a certain rose would bloom more and then the next year it may not bloom as much and that is something that i notice and we have plum perfect over here for the last few weeks i um took a video of plum perfect budding up all over the place and now it's time for a big show opens up nicely I wish you could see this rose in person. It is really beautiful. It has really dark, glossy foliages. And then the bloom, once again, um, my phone, it doesn't show true colors. In real life, it is like a true uh, purple color. On the screen here, it, it doesn't show the that purple that is exciting and we have april love over there um which finished the flash maybe last week so i prune i did uh prune and then most of the foliage just kind of fell off because um they were quite old and let's see here and we have a bosco bell this year my bosco bell is kind of late and um the bloom got eaten i was so looking forward to seeing it but look at that it's like half half of it was eaten by some box and there are some blooms here so we'll see it's really pretty, but I don't know um, how it would do with the um, when they all open up. We have Desdemona back there, another Desdemona here, and they have this gigantic uh, collard green. So right now it's messy right here because of the wind, kind of all over the place that is so bright why the screen becomes so bright here but um these are bord bordeaux and i need to deadhead that's for sure and i have wicked sister someone ask about wicked sister i do have it but it um looks like this year i'm going to get quite a few blooms over here can't wait last year didn't bloom much at all and it tends to grow tall i i did prune it but once again it um wanting to get tall oh there's a bloom right here look at the color it is super bright and I have more light in paris oh the blooms are so gorgeous the past few days but now after heavy rain need to deadhead it's like the, the
the colors and everything looks like it's glowing absolutely gorgeous but after that crazy wind this is what we have left but i did uh post a, a short video in the short section if you want to look at it when um just before before the rain and the wind looks really really pretty I'm going to just remove that one. And yes, the more you deadhead your roses, the more bloom is going to push out because that's like giving it the signal to make more, make more flowers. And have Evelyn number two over here. Some reason this year my Evelyn that's a lot of dye back. Right? I have to cut multiple times and then has another one here. Maybe that's the reason why David Austin discontinued it. It's not the healthiest rose out there, but the bloom is so pretty and unique. Okay, so let's see here. So this side right here, we have Bachiba. That gorgeous. Look at the colors, and I did move. Did I mention that I moved um, that Utasia? Why I can't pronounce that, but both are David Austin. So I moved that there, and it seems to like that spot because now it has tons of bloom. In the past two years, not many at all, and I like that it moving it there. We have different colors, we have like peachy, and that can be yellow sometimes. And then we have pink, and then we have raspberry cream twirl, which is like a dark pink. I do like um, color combination out there. It is getting dark, so look at that Shiba. So beautiful, this rose. This rose is so gorgeous. I'm so glad that I bought it. It has been a great climbing rose. If you um, if you are thinking about climbing rose, and I did mention that I won the crown princess margarita. That one's getting really big. So I thought, okay. I may not have room for the rose that size, so let me get Bachiba, which is like a smaller climbing rose, so it works quite well. It is so gorgeous and it has a really um, nice fragrance to it, like almost like honey. Gorgeous, gorgeous rose. Oh, there's a lace wing. How pretty. Oh, so we have a pest and beneficial insect in one. So that is cucumber beetle in case you are new. And they will eat up. They can fly too. And lace wing just left. So lace wing, when they lay eggs, right? When the babies come out. Um, so the babies are lace wing love air. I did post that in um, some of the videos showing you what they look like. They eat pests like um, aphids um, and some other pests. So it's great insects to have and they look so whimsical with their beautiful, pretty wings. It is fun to do gardening and then you um, start seeing small like little life that um, you typically don't have the time to stop and look for, right? Because we are so busy with our days and our lives and never have enough time to stop and see these little things in life. So another um, cucumber beetles and there's more but to come on uh, Bathsheba. I mean, how many 
animals, insects, and reptile we have seen today, so like snake skin, pest, beneficial insects, what else? Okay, so back to this pretty, pretty rose right here. So beautiful. I think it really likes this spot. And sometimes with uh, roses, you just you just don't know what it likes. Like there are certain roses that I have to move around my garden quite a few times until it blooms a whole lot more because it seems to like the spot or I don't know the shade. It, anything maybe it just feels just right you know the amount of the sun or amount of shade that it gets throughout the day but it really likes this spot i'm so glad and i think that's that is one of the advantage of growing roses in pots i mean it has pro and cons of course that you can move it around if you have a change of heart but of course if you have it in the ground you can just dig it up but that's like a little bit more painful having to do that and then risk um disturbing the root system and creating the transplant shock and all that but not a big deal but i do love this color right here and raspberry cream twirl still looking beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I need to start deadheading more. That beautiful rose. This year really impressed me. I don't know how I'm going to deadhead up there. No clue. I'm sure the neighbor. Um, Get to enjoy that too if they like roses, of course. Not much lighting left. And Quicksilver is doing well. It's such a nice size. I'm so glad I found this one at um, Antique Rose Emporium. This one, let me just get rid of it. it. Has a few more, but up here, top cream is doing well. New growth that I show you last in the last video. This time around, has it has um, they have grown even more. See that it's like they almost have grown overnight and this hairy view print I mean it is getting so tall and I'm trying to I'm trying to use um this to support it but the wind so strong whoops sorry I'm trying to move it around a little bit because it for some reason it doesn't have that um i think the stem is just so thin but i hope that that will improve as it um it gets older because right now as you can see it's like flopping to the to the ground the thin stem unlike quicksilver over there i think the the stems are a lot more like thicker and sturdier right versus that one that's kind of floppy at the moment but it's going to be pretty tall my tomato is growing so fast so so fast my cucumber wants to climb to the ground this unforgettable all of a sudden, I spot more new growth. Oh, that's exciting. 
when did that happen and weeds like weeds just appear overnight it's like magic crazy and i think spirit of freedom is done we need to deadhead um we have silas manor tons of bloom however most of the blooms have um rip damages still look pretty really beautiful and talking about health it is very healthy maybe i speak too soon right now because the rain um may have to wait may have black spot in a few days but that may not be the case looking pretty good it is so pretty out here right now sunset and so quiet so this one is all it's going to dead hit that one tons of blooms this one i think is two years old if i remember correctly because i bought it the year that david austin released it love this rose love 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 and um some brew climbing rose still has a uh, few more bloom not a whole lot but there are quite a few to go beautiful this rose is doing really well even that it is light color but i don't see a whole lot of um rip damage is compared to another rose bol uh, bol bolero i can't pronounce yeah that one rips love that rose but if you like white i think this one is doing really well because rips they i don't know if they love light color roses or you can spot them a lot easier on um, light color roses be because plum perfect back there has tons of thrift damages too so it is possible that they like all roses but might be a lot easier to see damages on the light color one that makes sense this is double easy orange and this tent drum taking a break i just did hit everything we have petals on the brown um pink piece done too oh my gosh that rose has huge blooms like five inches in diameters i don't remember if i had that in my um previous video or not but huge uh what is this Sparkle and shine. Forgot the name for a moment. My favorite yellow roses. So bright. And look at the sunset. Oh, see the moon. The moon is out. Uh, Belinda's blush has new growth. Catrido's bell has a few blooms. That's the one that I plant in the ground. And somehow I disturbed the roots um, when I moved from the pot to the ground here. But luckily, because these buds were all wilted a few days ago, but now they are all upright. Yay. This one, the red one that I planted recently as well, called In the Mood. And once again, the, on the screen, it is like showing bright orange. In real life, it is like deep, deep, deep dark color. Really gorgeous. And we have another moonlight in Paris over here. This rose is so pretty. I can't believe I have two. And I have sweet Mademoiselle over here. And of course, in that corner, we have a Florentina. The blooms are still holding up really well, 
even after the rain and crazy amount of wind it is so gorgeous and not a whole lot's blooming in um the race bed so i think that will be it for this uh video and i will see you all in the next one have a lovely day thank you so much for visiting bye